Let's be honest with each other. A lot of what we do in the do-it-yourself PC community is because we can, and that's not always a bad thing, especially if you just wanna throw in some sick looking lighting or something like that. But today, we're talking about CPUs, specifically Intel's new Broadwell E enthusiast line. Even though CPU cores have become a little like cylinders in your city-only cruising sedan's engine, where the only point in having a V12 is to say, screw you, I have 12 cylinders. Intel is hoping that its new top-end 10-core behemoth with a price to match will be a hit with those who need top-end performance. So let's take a look at it and the rest of the Broadwell E line and see if it's more than just a status symbol for techies. The GTX 1080 Amp Extreme from Zotac features their Ice Storm cooler with triple 90mm eco fans for better airflow and heat extraction. Check out the link below to learn more. So it's been almost two years since we've gotten a new line of enthusiast processors from Intel. The main thing that sets these CPUs apart from their mainstream brethren is the inclusion of more cores and the inclusion of more RAM slots. Broadwell E is no exception. The bottom two chips on the ladder, the Core i7 6800K and 6850K are each hexacore with the latter providing 40 PCI Express lanes instead of 28, while the 6900K features eight cores and 16 threads, meaning it's essentially a direct replacement for the previous top dog, the i7-5960X. But if you want to go all out, the new chip sitting at the top of the heap is the 6950X, featuring 10 cores and 20 threads, the most that Intel has ever packed into an enthusiast class CPU. Of course, it shouldn't be surprising that since Intel is trying to set 10 cores as the new gold standard for desktops, consumers will pay a hefty premium. The chip's MSRP is over 1700 US dollars, enough to build an entire high-end gaming rig with peripherals that would be like pretty good. And all you're really getting for the $600 premium over the roughly $1,100 6900K, other than the X in the model number that is important to some people, are two more cores and an extra five megabytes of cache. And even then, you take an overall hit on clock speed. Now, huge price jumps for more cores isn't exactly new for anyone, but spending that much for two more cores when you're already at eight and then taking a hit in the speed department is iffy especially at that cost. Our best guess is that Intel priced it this high to keep part of their Xeon line from being cannibalized by the highest end Core i7s, as many Xeon SKUs have 10 cores and will work on consumer grade X99 motherboards. But for the average home PC builder, how can anything actually justify forking this much money over for? Well, Broadwell E does come with a cool feature where the core with the greatest overclocking potential as determined by Intel at the factory is marked in the BIOS with an asterisk. So if you're running a heavily single threaded application and want the best possible performance, you can overclock that core alone. Then in Windows, Intel Turbo Boost 3.0 will automatically set the affinity of that application to that core specifically, making optimizing performance for single-threaded programs pretty easy. But that alone won't get most of you to spend $1,700, especially as these features are on all the Broadwell E SKUs, not just the 6950X. And even then, why are you optimizing for single core applications if you're buying one of these CPUs? You should probably be buying one of these CPUs for definitely multi-threaded applications, as in single core, they don't do that great. So speaking of which, let's talk about performance instead. We benchmarked all four Broadwell E chips on the X99 Deluxe 2 from ASUS, which features their new Aura onboard RGB lighting for not only some cool effects on the PCIe slots, but also for the rest of your rig, which is pretty cool as it has a header to allow board lighting effects to sync with other case lights. You also get a U.2 and M.2 slots for higher end NVMe SSDs, an extra 4-pin connector for additional CPU power, and USB 3.1 support, including a Type-C connector. 
The rest of our test bench consisted of 32 gigabytes of Corsair Dominator DDR4, an H100i GTX AIO, a GeForce GTX 1080 Founders Edition, and a Kingston HyperX Savage SSD. We tested the Broadwell E line against the previous generation 5960X, as well as the current Skylake Core i7-6700K, so we instead used the ASUS Z170 Deluxe for the latter. Right off the bat, it's pretty fair to say that it's hard to justify buying any Broadwell E chip if your heaviest workload will be gaming, as the $315 Skylake 6700K beat every single Broadwell E SKU in all of our gaming benchmarks, including the flagship 6950X, even in cities skylines, which tends to be more CPU bound than many other titles. But of course, that's not surprising. It's been known for a long time that CPUs with more than four cores see more utility on the content creation side and with things like file compression or encryption. Here we see more threads and cores benefiting in Cinebench, 7-Zip, and H.264 video rendering, as well as in Ida64's AES encryption benchmark. Photo editing benchmarks were a bit of a mixed bag, however, which Ida64's PhotoWorks benchmark favoring the higher core count of Broadwell E, but RealBench's GIMP tests showed the Skylake 6700K pull ahead on the single core tasks. Indeed, Cinebench's single core benchmark showed the 6700K well ahead of the other four Broadwell E chips as well. But what about overclocking? Could cranking up our clock speeds add more value to the Broadwell E line? We chose to overclock the 6900K since it's the closest thing to a direct upgrade from the older X series SKU. We got our review sample up to 4.3 gigahertz or 300 megahertz over the stock turbo boost. Unfortunately, there was a huge power and thermal penalty as CPU cores shot up to 88 degrees Celsius and we had to put 1.375 volts through the processor to get it stable. Not exactly ideal since the last gen Haswell E series seemed to have a little more headroom across the board. Performance did increase notably in some benchmarks with the overclock, but single core performance still lagged behind our 6700K running at stock speeds. So with all of that said, do any of these CPUs really make any sense? No doubt there are real scenarios like 3D rendering or really heavy encryption work where more cores do matter. But from a price to performance standpoint, the 6800K seems to make the most sense since you're only paying $120 more than you would for a 6700K and get two extra hyper-threaded cores. And while it only has 28 PCI Express lanes, that might not be as important as it used to be, especially as Nvidia is no longer supporting more than two graphics cards in SLI for gaming purposes. And you'll pay a hefty premium to upgrade to the 6850K's 40 lanes. I'm talking almost another $200. So while Broadwell E might be the ultimate thing for enthusiasts to drool over right now, I'd rather spend my money on the glam that won't spend its life hidden under a water block, even though that would probably be pretty cool. Today we're highlighting the K7XX black headphones, of course, from Mastrop. And they have a bunch of other cool products that you can check out at the link in the video description as well. Hopefully you guys know about Mastrop by now, but if not, the concept is still pretty simple. The more people commit to a purchase, the more people that commit to a certain price for a certain product, the lower the price of that product goes. These are the exact same ones that Linus reviewed last year. And remember, this is a limited drop, so if you want a pair, you're gonna have to act pretty fast. These headphones were configured by Mastrop and manufactured by AKG. So if you want to check them out and grab a pair of K7XX headphones, head over to the link in the video description down below. Thanks for watching guys. If you liked this video and you're like, I'm going to buy the 6800 or maybe just not an Enthusiast Series 1 because I want to play games. Cool. If you dislike the video because you're like, screw you, I want 10 cores and I don't care about gaming performance and I don't do anything else with it anyways. I just want 10 cores. You can, uh, yeah, you can do that. If you want to purchase one of the items featured in this video, check out Amazon. If you want to talk about the items featured in this video, check out the forum. You can become a contributor there. It doesn't really do a ton, but it's like cool and you get a little badge thing and some people care about those. And there's also like a member title thingy that shows up in its different colors depending on what tier. 
Don't worry about it. Uh, if you want to see our review of the 6700K, check that out up here, gaming processor. That's what it's marketed for, so that actually totally makes sense.